Live from San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Oracle Open World 2015 from Studio C, brought to you by Cisco. Now your hosts, Stu Miniman and Jeff Frick. Everybody, you are watching theCUBE. We are live at Oracle Open World 2015. We are on the exhibit floor in Moscone South. A lot of action, a lot of video, but this is theCUBE. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I think this is about event number 70. Busy fall tour, we're really excited to be here. Joining this next segment by Stu Miniman from Wikibon. And a first time, first time uh, guy in theCUBE, Marcus Phipps, Senior Manager, Data Center and Cloud Marketing from Cisco. Yep. Welcome. Thanks, glad to be here. Absolutely, so welcome to theCUBE. So you are all about UCS. It tells me in my notes, you're the deep dive guy. I'm, I'm one of the deep dive guys, yeah. So we'll try not to go too terribly deep. Uh, but what I wanted to talk about today is the concept of UCS integrated infrastructures and really what we bring to the table there. Alrighty, so what exactly does that mean then? Okay, so what converged infrastructures or integrated infrastructures mean is it's basically taking computing, networking, and storage and integrating them together into a predefined solution. And really when you look at where customers have been and really what their, what their key challenges are, it really comes down to two things, complexity and speed. Technology is hard, it's difficult. If you're trying to integrate all of this yourself, it can be really complex and it can take a lot of time. And the other piece that's really important is speed. How fast can I get a service up and running? If I have to take months to build out the infrastructure. That's not flying anymore. That's not flying, right? You, you simply can't do it anymore, and that's putting IT under tremendous pressure. Right. Yeah, yeah. Marcus, uh, you know, we, we've tracked this space for many years, and heck, I, I lived in an interoperability lab for six years during my career, so, you know, pe people send, tend to oversimplify things. They're like, well, first of all, I've got standards, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I, I take these plugs, they go together, it should all work together, and I should be able to take any application and throw it on, you know, any infrastructure, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, where, where's kind of the hard work, uh, and what is Cisco doing to really simplify these? So you can always do that. You know, we always tell customers, if you want to assemble it yourself, you can absolutely do that. But what's happening is, yeah, I mean, the plugs are going to work, and, and frankly, you know, an Oracle database is going to run on UCS. The challenge usually isn't there. The challenge is in how all of the integration of the systems come together, right? What's the best way of connecting UCS to storage? What's the best way of implementing software-defined networking over the entire infrastructure and then deeper into the, into the networking infrastructure? How do you do that? There's probably about 10 different ways you could do it. No customer's going to want to do each of the 10 different ways to figure out what the best way is. So they're really looking for Cisco and our storage partners and our application partners like Oracle to figure out what's the best way of doing that so I can get that up and running as quickly as possible. And so when you're trying to figure out the best way, I mean, what are some of the factors that determine the best way? Because I'm, it's, right, it's horses for courses, it's application specific, it's what do you need. So what are some of the things that you guys look at when you're trying to optimize and figure out the best way? So what we'll do first and foremost is we'll take the core systems of, UC, of, of the integrated infrastructure and there's really three of them that we bring to the table. There's the computing component, which is UCS. There's the Nexus uh, component, which also includes uh, application-centric infrastructure for software-defined networking. And then there's the orchestration piece. So at the, at the first level, customers are going to want to understand, okay, well how do those pieces work together, right? What should my configuration of UCS be if I'm running an Oracle database or I'm running eBusiness Suite? Uh, what does my service profile look like? You familiar with the concept of service profiles yep, yep, generally? Yep. So for the benefit of the customers watching this, you basically define a server in software, apply it to the underlying infrastructure, and it just works. So there's different ways you can configure that service profile. Here's the best way of doing it for a database, for e-business suite, and so forth, so that when you're applying that to the underlying infrastructure, you know that it's just going to work. Why? Because we've tested it, we've validated it, we've taken a lot of the hard work and, and made it work. And these are your validated designs that have come up? These are the Cisco validated designs that you can find on designzone.com, yeah. Okay. So, so Marcus, we've actually done quite a bit of research on this, and kind of the further up the stack you go, it kind of gets exponentially more important as to those integrations. Uh, because even if I, I've got the infrastructure all set, it, you know, when I set my applications on top of it, I need to know how that interaction, how the performances work, how I balance everything. So I, I guess the question, you know, we're here at Oracle, you know, why shouldn't all customers just buy an entire red stack where everything from the silicon all the way up to the application itself is owned by one vendor? It's, you know, Oracle, you know, doing well in that business, uh, you know, that, that full integrated stack versus, you know, 
that you know Cisco, uh, of course, works with lots of applications, including yeah. So we found that what customers are really looking for is a tremendous degree of flexibility. You know, they have existing processes, they have existing vendors, uh, they have, in many cases, UCS for a lot of their high-performance applications, or, or frankly, any application. And so that flexibility in terms of infrastructure, being able to tweak things as necessary to bring in, you know, EMC as part of a vSpecs, or NetApp storage as part of a FlexBot, or IBM storage as part of a VersaStack, and then have the ability to configure that as they need. That's why we've really seen the UCS integrated infrastructure construct take off. In fact, if, uh, according to IDC, uh, I think Cisco had about, participated in about 47 percent of the integrated infrastructures with vBlock and with FlexPod alone. And we're actually over 50 percent because EMC is tracked separately, but we actually participate in their vSpecs program as well. So in the integrated infrastructure or converged infrastructure category, we're seeing a lot of success because customers want that kind of flexibility. And even kind of breaking it down a little bit further, you know, you do have the reference architecture piece, which is what FlexPod and VersaStack and some new solutions we're working on with Nimble are today. And then you have the, uh, you know, the, the kind of pre-configured ship from the loading dock, or I should say, the, from the factory floor to your loading dock, and that's what VCE is delivering, which even more tightly integrates uh, UCS and EMC storage and VMware virtualization. Yeah, so maybe could you talk a little bit, but the, the piece that gets overlooked when you put these pieces together is uh, you know, the management and the orchestration oh, yes. uh, piece of that. So I, I know it's been key to Cisco's you know, architecture from the beginning, but maybe, maybe you can give us an update there. Yeah, you know, five years ago when we were talking about the initial integrated infrastructures, and that was you know, vBlock and FlexPod, you know, it was enough to be able to spin up a VM very quickly, because that's really at the time what customers were looking for. They wanted to see, hey, give me a VM, I'll put an application on it, and I'm done. We're seeing more and more that customers are now trying to build a private cloud type environment uh, where they want to say, okay, I want to offer you uh, a VM as a service, a database as a service, you know, an instance of an application as a service. And to do this, right, if I can go to a public cloud and get it in 15, 20 minutes, well, I'm going to have to be able to do something like that internally. Now, even with the CVDs, if I have to configure each of the individual components, we can do it quickly, but still it's going to take uh, an element of time. If I can automate all of that, if I can automate the UCS piece, bring it together with the Nexus piece, bring it together with our partner storage piece, you can then get that service up and running much, 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 much faster, and you can meet the expectations uh, of the cloud. So the orchestration piece, you know, which in Cisco is the Cisco One UCS director, and above that, Cisco One Enterprise Cloud Suite, we have APIs that connect into our partner storage ecosystem. So now when you say, you know, click, I want to add a service, you can now automate the provisioning of that and it can all come up and running very, very quickly. So with the foundation of it being the standardized infrastructure of standardized storage from our partners, standardized UCS, standardized Nexus, and then the services that you can deploy on top of that with, you know, we've never really called it software-defined computing, but that's kind of what it is with UCS, and then software-defined networking, and then what our partners are delivering with storage, it's really easy now to automate these capabilities. Yeah, and you bring up software-defined networking. So the newer component uh, from Cisco is the application-centric infrastructure, or yes. ACI. Um, I have to tell you, the whole SDN discussion's been a bit fuzzy. Most customers really haven't gotten it. Um, you know, Cisco and VMware have kind of led in the marketing mm -hmm. of it and starting to see customer adoption. It was here at VMworld uh, you know, a month or so ago, um, and you know, it really seemed like security was you know, mm -hmm. the tip of the spear in what they were doing. So, you know, ACI, it, it, it's many things, but you know, what, what's the key value that customers are having? Where's the adoption and how does it fit into the, the, this discussion that we're having? Well, at a high level, I mentioned earlier how UCS, you, can, you configure what the server looks like in software and you apply it to the underlying resources. What SDN is doing, or what, what ACI is doing in the context of SDN is you basically define, as I'm leaving my, my server and I'm going out into the, the big bad world out there, what does that application require? What does it require for load balancing? What does it require for security, as, as you asked as, as a second ago? And then how do I automate that? So if I can say, for instance, here is the web front end to uh, an Oracle e Business Suite application. Who can talk to it? Who can't talk to it? How can the web tier talk to the application tier, talk to the database tier? If I can pre-configure that in terms of 
when, when you leave the server and you're going to another server, what the network must do there, I can pre-program that with application-centric infrastructure. I can create that template, I can define what that application requires, and then I simply apply that under the underlying switches. Now with the ecosystem that we have for ACI, we have a very broad uh, spectrum of partners around the security realm. So clearly Cisco sells security. We sell firewalls, intrusion protection. We also have partnerships with the Citrix, F5, Checkpoint, et cetera, so that we can extend those policies to those partners as well. So therefore, as you're leaving the server, going out into the network, you're guaranteed that security will follow that at every point in the network. And that's huge from a security standpoint. Yeah, so if we look at kind of the demands on the CIO and IT in general, the biggest challenge they have is, is really operationally. You know, last, God, it feels 10, 15 years we've been talking about, up, oh, spend 70, 80% of our budget on keeping the lights on. Uh, server virtualization, unfortunately, didn't really move the needle for us much. Do you have any metrics as to, you know, how, how these solutions are helping customers from an operational standpoint? How, how, is it, how does it really simplify, kind of, on day zero, as well as during the lifetime of, time of the product? So let me give you a couple of numbers that we found in, in talking to our many customers over the years of, of, you know, leveraging and delivering integrated infrastructures. You know, the first is 80%. 80% is about the reduction time that we've seen in deploying infrastructure. So, you know, where it used to take, you know, weeks, it can now take days, and that's huge. So if I have a team of people, or even one person, deploying, you know, a flex pod or a V block, and they can get that infrastructure up and running within a day, that's a huge time savings compared to where they've been before. Another number I'll give you is 77%, and that's the reduction that we've seen in cabling and infrastructure costs. Right, so people often don't realize that the lifespan cost of a cable is about $1,000. And that's the cable itself, that's terminating the cable, that's cable trays, that's maintenance, that's shooting the cable. So if I can reduce that cost using the unified fabric capabilities you know, that, are, that are inherent in UCS, that's a huge cost benefit, both CapEx and OpEx. And the other number is 61%. And that's the reduction that we've seen in ongoing operational and management costs for this system. So if I can reduce that, you know, just you know, sitting in front of, of an operations terminal, right, maintaining the system, troubleshooting and doing break fix, if I can save some of that, then I can put those you know, very high value employees, I can put them on new projects, right? The first you know, iPad project, you know, replacing laptops, putting iPads everywhere, uh, mobility, any of these really kind of cutting edge type solutions, I can now put my resources on that as opposed to the proverbial, as you said, keeping the lights on. Yeah, I, I, I'm curious. There's, if you talk about kind of the overall management uh, task there, there's so many repetitive actions mm -hmm. that you know we don't want to have to deal with, and many of them are just configurations. Yep. As you know, on the networking side, it's always like, all right, how many hours do I spend configuring VLANs and, and figuring all this? Uh, are you guys tied in with things like Chef Puppet, Ansible, Salt Stack uh, to be able to really yep. automate uh, some of these processes? Yeah, we've been working with all of those vendors. Uh, and the, the good thing there is you, know, you can, again, define what you're doing once, and then you can apply that you know, through the infrastructure as you need. And so when you look at the repetitive management task and simplifying all of that, this is really how you get down to the management cost savings and a lot of the TCO benefits that you're seeing with the system overall. Yeah, so yeah, great. huge advantage for yeah. us. Switch, switch it over to something policy-based, make sure I've got APIs to tie in everything I'm doing, and you know, get out of uh, what we was call the undifferentiated heavy lifting, which uh, you know, unfortunately you know, keep, keeps folks running around the data center too much and not getting enough work done. Exactly, yeah. and that's the whole policy mechanism that we've used, which underlies you know, the, the integrated infrastructures. It defines what we're doing with UCS, with Nexus, you know, what we're doing with UCS Director and Cisco One, so that you can deploy these capabilities now much, much faster. All right, so Marcus, uh, you know, if you're talking to your customers, any good stories you can talk as to you know, how, how they're really transforming their business uh, you know, through you know, leveraging these type of solutions? Well, one of the interesting things that we heard, uh, you know, how it was about five years ago now when vBlock was first coming out, and uh, you know, customers were saying at the time, there was one customer that I remember saying, we love the technology, we just can't consume it. We're not organized effectively, we're, we don't have those capabilities. So technology, awesome, but it's not everything. What we've seen with, with some of these same customers, some of these very large enterprise customers, is that over the last several years, they've been able to transform their organizations, which you know, we talk about technology, but the people and processes are really important here too. Uh, and a lot of these teams are now really coming together to be able to leverage this converged infrastructure and integrated infrastructure technologies. And that's where they're seeing a lot of the benefits, right? They have more effective teams and they've been able to get applications up and running you know, within weeks because the infrastructure itself can be deployed within days. 
so they can spend you know, the hard stuff getting the application on the system, up and running, ready to go and out to their users. And is the driver more of the stick because they're competing with the card swipe at Amazon or is it more the carrot and really seeing the opportunity to free up those resources it, to do other things? It's actually a little bit of both. We're actually seeing a little bit of both. We see customers that, that are saying, you know what, I, I really would like to get control or I absolutely positively have to get control. How do I do that? But there's you know, a lot of forward-thinking CIOs who are looking at this and saying, you know what, there's some really interesting opportunities I have. I can really you know, get into this new DevOps type of environment. I can really now work with my application teams to see you know, how can I create the next level of infrastructure to allow them to be more productive. All right, so, uh, we're at Oracle Open World. Uh, anything specifically you're looking forward to this week? Presentations, any announcements we should know about? Well, I'm presenting actually in about 10 minutes at the Cisco Theater over here. <laughs> so, always looking forward well, to- What's going on at the Cisco Theater for the folks that haven't stopped by yet? So I'm going to be talking about integrated infrastructures again. So uh, for those who uh, just caught part of this but would like a little bit more details, they can come by the theater and you know, happy to, happy to talk, to it, talk about it again. All right. Well, Marcus, thanks for stopping by, spending a few okay. minutes with us in Thank the you. cube. Uh, we are live at Oracle Open World. It's our sixth year we've been here. We're pretty excited to be here once again. We're down at the exhibit uh, floor. Stop by booth 801. You're watching theCUBE. We're going wall to wall for three days. We'll be back with our next guest after this short break. Show the value of integration. All right, we're out. Yeah. Yeah. Is that good? I think that's great.